So this, I think, is just the internal? Like, I think so. Yeah, it's just default. Hurrah, okay. So we're going to use this today. Well, yeah, but the thing is, that's not this, I don't think. It's using the default, which is this. I'm going to do uh, something real quick. No, we haven't changed anything, which is the most disappointing thing of all. Yeah. Um, and we just used it this weekend yeah. for our patron stream. I mean, something's wrong with this old boy. Um, and so, is the mute button always red? Yes. Oh. Watch it. This is what happens if you mute it. Oh, okay. Seems like a waste um, of power. But. but anyway, yeah, we had just used this for a stream and everything was fine. And so, no, nothing has changed. And so we, I guess, can troubleshoot that later. Yeah. All right. So back to what we were talking about when apparently they didn't hear your yeah. opening. No, we're going to discuss the poll because the poll happened. It happened. There was a vote. And the vote was wrong. The vote was wrong. On so many levels. So dreadfully wrong. All wrong. I don't even know what's wrong with you guys. But go ahead. Let's. Uh, so the poll was for a style for our writing system. And we had these three styles, uh, which in my head I described as cattail style, Roman style, pirate style, and... Joke. Yeah, the joke one that you were supposed to ignore. Um, anyway, so, um, here is the results. First, uh, in last place was, uh, Roman style. Was, yeah, the, the one in green, um, that one got the fewest votes, um, and, yeah, I feel like... Roman is devastated. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was his style after all. Yeah. Um, and so... I know, Magpie, right? Like, <laughs> well, we, we really should have discussed this more, I guess. Um, but anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Um, Roman came in last. Yeah. Tied for the tightest second place ever. Um, and uh, options A and C tied. And so, with 11. Um, with 11 votes, yeah, um, each. And in case you're wondering, option A was the clear winner in my book. I was like, oh my God, look at that sexy glyph. That's amazing. Um, and that's how I wanted it to look. And then option D won. By one vote. By one vote, yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan, right? Like it was, it was gorgeous. I loved it. Um, I still love it. I still love it. My love has not died, even though my soul has. <laughs> <laughs> my love has not. So cool. Cool. I know, Abby. I know. Silvertail. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Full Candyland is right. All right. So, yeah, A was so pretty, right? Those sleek curves with, like, not quite a serif, but a, mm -hmm. like, oh, my goodness. It was, it was so sexy. Uh, anyway. So now I'm going to have to figure out how to make this work. So, also, by the way, whenever I told David what the results were, not only did he not believe it, he questioned my ability to make sure that I had actually looked at all three 
<laughs> sets of results. Even though clearly there was more than just yes. one set on here, he was like, did you look at them all? And I was like, yes. It seemed impossible. David. It seemed utterly impossible. Mm. Mm. Anyway. All right. Yeah, so we'll have to find a way to make that work. <clears throat> <sighs> Moving on. Moving on. Logan, I guess, I guess my heart will go on. <laughs> As I pry the cold, frozen fingers of font style A off of the wooden door, I'll float away into the night. <laughs> and my heart will, will go on. All right. Let's take a look at whatever we were doing last time. So this is what we did. We did um, the imperatives, which I thought was some fine con -like work. Do you remember though that our goal was to actually start entering verbs? Yeah. And we didn't. No. Um, didn't. That's why we did the imperatives and you're right like that was some some inspired stuff that was exciting. Um, but yeah like the whole goal was let's enter these two verbs in the dictionary and we didn't. Yeah. So, um, we have a section on participles because uh, I know we're going to do, are we going to do relative clauses? Um, well, relative clauses is, um, was what we oh, were no. going to start last time with. And so, um, because we were going to just real quick enter the two names into the dictionary. So they were there. Yeah. But relative clauses was actually like where we were going to start, because that's what the vote had been about from the, the prior big vote. Okay. Well, what was standing in the way was the principal parts, right? That was what was standing in the way. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and no, no, no. Making the, making the lines thinner would make it worse. Um, that, that, that wouldn't work. Uh, all right. Um, you can make the bubbles into little hearts at the end. We're going to need to go in the opposite direction. It's going to need to get thicker. And we're going to have to have a lot of variable width. Uh, let's figure that out. Okay, so we have our positive imperative form. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, this form with, you know, just one of the um, non-odd loops uh, is, I thought of that. I thought of that and rejected it. Um, <clears throat> um, it really is the kind of like the Cooper Black version of it. Um, so the refusal is going to be our, okay, oh, so right, so this is what we figured, we, we were trying to figure out, we we're trying to figure out if class nine should be a principal part, or if we should even have a separate thing for verbs and just put them in class nine. Right. And so I don't know. Excuse me, I don't know where to go. I had suggested listing a quote combining form. Um, where it's like this is what you add all of the verbal endings to and then the class nine form because the class nine um, is more likely to shift more as it does in ne and suho you actually see the the age um, but then because like once you know the the quote combining yes. form um Kind of like that beginning start all of the verb stuff that comes after is much more um predictable and so it's like we wouldn't need to enter all of that at any point it's like once you know it's well all you're going to see is the tsu you're not going to ever see the h and in fact you're going to have it elongated the tsuu everything after that is the you know the m vowel ts vowel k um, where the vowel is under specified. And so like that, I think makes sense to me. And that, that's still what I would 
I remember why uh, when you did the imperatives, because I was thinking, well, maybe we'll use these, these bare forms as imperatives, and then we but didn't we didn't end up mm -hmm. doing it. Um, but you had been concerned that we would never see the H in chase, but then I had pointed out that the H in the patientive, that class nine was actually from the base. Yeah. And so um, I don't, so we do see it. So we do see the full base form. It's just only in the class nine. And so that's my, my two cents. Enter a combining form and then list the whatever class nine parts would be um, necessary. But like, what's the head form? What's the citation form? It's a combining form. It's not a word though. Mm -mm. That's how our verbs are. Something like Greek lists an actual form for its citation form for verbs. I mean, the shortest form is the imperative if we wanted to just list that. And that would show the combining form because we know the M and S are from the um, imperative form. So you see that it's ant, and so it's going to be ant the entire time. You see that it's su, and so it's going to be tsu the entire time. Problem is, then you have to choose a class. I mean, we could we could actually do what Latin does and do first person singular. Oh, Jake, how thou hast betrayed us! Hi, Jake. <laughs> um. So so. I mean, it is kind of arbitrary. You know, Latin does the same thing. Uh, rather than doing, um, rather than doing the, uh, what you call it, uh, the infinitive, Latin lists the first person singular present tense form of a verb, and um, and uh, we could do the same. And have it the. Um First person, or, or did you want like cat agreement? Since it's obviously all about the cats. I mean, but I guess doing first person though would well. Isn't first person the most variable because that's the only one that starts with a vowel? Anyway. Jake, you chose the wrong one. I'm just going to say it. But of course, due to our previous poll about us subverting polls, we can't subvert this poll. We can try to make it look better. Yeah. It's going to be tough. It's going gonna, it's gonna to require some long hours creating the orthography, which I know everybody here is a fan. So the truth is, it just takes it takes time and effort if you want to do something that looks good. If you want to do something that looks poor, it doesn't take a long time. And I think we need a Copico not for celebration, but for mood spirits. You can post it on our neography where everything is pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. And oh. this is not our celebration. We'll get another one later. This is our... Let's get David through this hump so that way we can try to figure out verb forms. Cheers. Cheers. And then we can move on to relative clauses, yeah, yeah. which has been voted on. Consolation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Is your does your arm hurt me more as I touch it? You These good? things are never a big deal for me. Got Last mine. time you got it, 
every time I touched your arm during the stream, you were like, oh my gosh, I just got my booster. So no, no, you like no, made a I big didn't. deal out of it. I didn't so, just get it, it was Tuesday. So this time I was like, oh shoot, I just touched his arm. It was Tuesday though. Um, Copy Cope. Yes, Abby. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jake. 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 I know Silvertail. I know. But, like, I wasn't even worried about it because I really thought A and B were going to be the two that it came down to, to be quite honest. I am shocked that B came in in the mm -hmm. position it did. And then C was winning most, like, for the entire week. And so I never even gave a thought to D. Um, let's go. Um, I want to see something. For the um, for the nominal principal parts, we have this, this, mm -hmm. this, and this. Would any of those happen to produce the same combining? For the verb. Mm -hmm. well, those are pronouns, though. They weren't the nouns, yeah? No, that wasn't. Oh, that was vanity. Never mind. I thought that was the pronoun. Woo! Go yeah. back. Sorry. <laughs> I know what I... None of these. None of these end in H. All right. Well, let's um, let's 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 put let's put one through its paces. So we have Z O H is Chase. And let's put that in the genitive, ablative, ablative, and illative. Mm -hmm. I think, um, watch there. Okay. So. Seeing if we no, we don't have any protocols that end in H and G. Okay, but uh, what are the what are the cases? Mm -hmm. One second, please. Um, I need to make this part of the grammaticalization. I have the chart up here. Where is the chart? I haven't entered this. I don't know why. We have a chart somewhere. There it is. Okay. Genitive ich. Ablative uh, kiss. Yeah. Ablative ja. And then num for it. And this now to my grammaticalization, which that is a shame that I have not yet done that. That's embarrassing, in fact. Collapsed. Yeah, here we go. Combining form shows up here uh, and here. Okay. Let's um. So let's double check to make sure all forms that we need show up. They do. <clears throat> oh, I was so glad to be with it. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, hug has got to be why I. Hmm. Um, can you find the proto form for hug? Yeah. 
frankly, it's a little confusing to me that uh, writing wasn't invented several hundreds of times. It was, it, of course, it wasn't only invented once. Everybody knows that, right? Writing wasn't only invented once. But it, it, the utility is just so obvious, and it seems like everybody should come up with the idea in one lifetime. Like, there's no reason that they shouldn't have. Okay, good. Now throw and give. And if I know give. to search for it again it's in the grammaticalization section as it should have been the entire time okay and then um, protoform for throw is it RIT mm. or is it RET no it's I I okay. Good. and that of course will be the head form now Okay, no, um, hmm. this is, um, okay. We need to go back and think about um, uh, when we were coming up with this whole telic, atelic system and transitive versus intransitive uh, versus ditransitive, kind of that system. Did we plan on being able to use every single verb in every single way, kind of like to pop? I believe not. Telic, a telic, more or less, yes. Yeah. But in terms of like a verb being able to be intransitive, transitive, and ditransitive, I don't think so. Um, I think there is wiggle room for some verbs, but like for the most part, I I thought that like one pattern was going to more semantically cohere than another. Um, telic and atelic, we had discussed for the ones where it's not obvious, that could potentially be the, like, it's happening now, like the, the sort of, you know, continuous kind of aspect, um, reading on it, uh, versus, like, telic being more perfective reading. Um, but that was wow. more of, like, in context, it could be. Well, here's the thing, because there's two different ways to do this. Um, and one is a very hardcore, we are creating this verb and it has this use. And so we write into, this, into the dictionary, this is a verb that is receptive transitive, a verb that is agentive transitive, and a verb that is intransitive. The other system is a bit more loosey-goosey, and you can use any verb stem in any way that you would like, as long as it makes sense. I kind of like it. I'm kind of leaning towards it not being loosey-goosey and having a derivation that we could turn a verb into a different pattern. I mean, theoretically, the morphology is... Is enough, that derivation? Is derivative enough because it tells you exactly what it should be. Like...
feels like with the system we've created, that was the whole point. And so now, it needs to be loosey goosey. Yes, and part of what makes me think that is that once you negate something, it's already going to be. Um, Like, if you negate something, it's already going to be redone. Not only that, if you pacify, if you pacify something, it's going to be undone. So when you pacify something, there's no way to tell if the verb should have been receptive transitive or patientive transitive. And when you negate that, it, there's no When you negate it, there's no way to tell if it's transitive or intransitive. But isn't that an argument for it to have some sort of inherent, more semantically cohesive interpretation where you've got to like kind of force it into a different reading? No. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's always good to give cats lots and lots of I mean, at the same time, like, if it's not in the sentence structure, then that tells you which to read it as, just like our many verbs that are loosey-goosey with intransitive versus transitive. Um, ditransitive is a little bit harder. Yeah. Uh, because that tends to be a bit more set in terms of what verbs can actually do that. But, um, you know, transitive, intransitive, we can... I ate, I ate breakfast, and it's like, you just, you figure out, well, there's an object, so there it's, it's being used in a transitive construction. Right. And so, I guess, yeah, you could be loosey goosey. Just at some point, maybe I'll make my language a bit more. Right. Yeah. Uh-oh. I'm going to do one thing. It's on the back of my shirt. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, David. Yeah. Well, was okay. it like a little fuzz or something? I don't know. It may have been. Um, so when it comes to something like this, you run the risk of doing what Esperanto did. I think I don't remember if I've talked about it on the stream before, but I've talked about it elsewhere. As one really quick side note, though, that is fascinating that Jonathan's correction showed up before the. The comment that actually needed corrected. Oh, That's right, yeah. amazing. It was supposed to be now, but it came out as no, and then the W comes first. That's so funny. That's amazing. Okay, sorry, go on. Um, so Esperanto has um, verbs that can be uh, transitive or intransitive, and there's no way to know uh, with a given verb if it should be transitive or intransitive. Um, and then it has two different suffixes that look very, very similar uh, in the orthography of Esperanto. There's ij, which is ig, where the g has a little hat, and then there's ig, ig, where the g does not have a hat. Ij takes a transitive verb and makes an intransitive verb out of it. Ig takes an intransitive verb and makes a transitive verb out of it. Um, but since there's no way to tell whether an original verb is transitive or intransitive, it leads to a hopeless jumble. Plus you have uh, users who, um, who you know, are familiar with their own language and so will use the verbs in their own way. And then you get bizarre usages, so I don't remember if this is the verb, I think it is, but like, you know, uh, it's something you can eat in Esperanto. Um, any, any food now, and come on, just one. It's fromaggio cheese? Homo. Homo, thank you. Me manjas homon. I am eating an apple. English speakers would be fine with me manjas. 
I am eating, but technically I believe it should be me manjijas. I am eating. In other words, the transitive verb has been turned into transitive. Anyway, it's just a absolutely hopeless um, cluster puppy um, and doesn't work. So that's kind of the issue with adding this morphology. You gotta find a way to make it work. Anyway. Okay, I appreciate where you're coming from. Yeah. And so let's make a loosey goosey. All right. Because sometimes the semantics of the verb, like, will probably let it go another direction. Yeah. Unless you try real hard. And we do in English, like, you can smile a smile, and it's like, did we really need to say that? Couldn't we have just smiled? Yeah, that's. Theory is that any single verb is basically transitive because you can always do that. Right. Mm. No, I don't know. I defenestrate, defenestrate. But then that one's already transitive, isn't it? Um, Brian, that is. Um, something that you'll want to explore more deeply um, because the simple answer is yes but the longer answer is it depends on the type of verb um, so and you can see lots of languages have done very very similar things um, and it'll be like a whole class of words where it's like you use a reflexive uh, but uh, there are other ones where you don't generally where you expect a reflexive is with an unergative verb. In other words, it's intransitive, but non-agentive. And so the one that is actually doing the thing is the one that is kind of also the object of the verb. And it's like, go. I mean, it's kind of agentive, but the idea is that you're also the one being gone. You're the one moving. Um, and that's when you would see this Miles had asked about the causative and implicative. Um, and will those differ in function from the receptive, transitive, ditransitive verbs? Um, we can mark off passive. We considered that um, from our little list of, and we did commands. We can take that away. Um, look at us go. Woo! Yeah. yeah get rid of that. Um, <clears throat> Technically, once we get through the relative clause, we'll be done with the participles too, right? right? Yeah. Um, and so that is going to be done at some point. Um, but yeah, we haven't discussed that yet, Miles. Um, we haven't discussed that yet. Okay. And then retransitivize with quirky object case. Oh, wow, that's cool. These are the, the verbs in Russian that end with like a, a, looks like a, from their perspective, a C. Is this, is this correct? Well, let's no. see. No, it has to go the other no, way. No, it has to go the other way. So it's no, our wait. way too. Wait, that makes it right for us. Just well, a second. I, no, that's correct. The first one was correct. It needs to be backwards for us. Yeah. Now that's backwards. Now it's backwards. So Dude. no, it's this one. So you wanted it to be backwards. Wait, wait. No, that's my left hand. No, so this was correct. Sorry. It ends with a C and then a backwards uh, R. The, the S. And it's pronounced like S. And um, like, uh, I prefer or I like. Uh, uh, whatever. Of, you know. Can't think of something I like in Russian. Uh, Ooh, crap. That's dogs. I like dogs. That or sabak. Like, yeah. Sabak would just be um, the dogs in general because I believe that it's feminine genitive plural because you want the genitive there. For cat, um, kosk, that would be feminine genitive plural. Um, uh, Miles is throwing out sabako, so clearly I remembered correctly. Um, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> I 
<laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. That's right. It, it looks exactly like an English C. It just has, it's pronounced like an S. That's the funny part, the pronunciation, not the way you write it. My bad there. Oh, All right. All right. So, here we go. This should be... Oh, because it's not genitive. It's actually... Okay, there we go. That's really cool. Okay. All right. How are you going to do this? Well, this needs to be come... <laughs> oh, no. And that's not even a Russian letter. That's my bad there. All right, so this is our proto form, and we're gonna keep the cases there just for little funsies, and we're gonna. Yeah, it's probably here. Maybe. Yeah. Did we get rid of that, that ch on the end? I feel like we did. Because um. none of those other uh, forms end in that. We did. Yeah. yeah. It's, we may have to have an H in there, but otherwise. Yeah. All right. And then this, and then the T voices. And then we should have this. Whoa. Oh. David J. David J. That's it's not. Oh, a, that's not an IPA. No. So it's David J. Yeah, David J. Oh, okay. I thought you were trying to say, like, de Bouye, and I was like, wait. That's, and that's that, and then that's actually the combined. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to call these nouns class nine, but we're going to define them as verbs. Is that right? That is correct. We're not going to otherwise mark the entry so we can easily find our verbs. That is correct. Okay. It's known. It's just going to be known. Class nines are most likely going to be verbs. So we also have class nine. Not it's many. all the abstract nouns. Not as many. Not as many. I think this will be good. Okay. <laughs> that smile gets me in so much trouble. Okay. I know. You know, if if, if Jesse were like 100% in charge of the language, it would be so much better. <laughs> I think that is what you two have realized on your own, independently, having worked with me now for three years, you're starting to see like, wait a minute, this actually isn't the best way of doing this. It's not the language, it's the documentation. And now you're realizing you're stuck. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Right. So, so now... We got that entered. We, we got that entered. Let is, me double... Is, is Jesse a verb too? I yes, because it's to draw, to paint, to sketch. 
right. But let me double check. I think I got center and center. Oh, okay. On the English side, I need to go ahead. I need to go ahead and put the e at the end. The nasal e. Yes. Okay. All right, so now I can take that off the list up top because we've entered it. Mm -hmm. oh, -hoo -hoo. Four. Okay. All right, so this one, the protoform is what you guess it would be. And we can enter, yes. Yeah, that um, there's some fun things with with southern vowels, and um, like for me, oil is definitely like two syllables. And my first year in Texas, someone was saying something about working in the oil field, and I was like, "The what? Oil field? The what? Oil field?" And like I could not understand what they were saying, but it's like kind of not quite an awe, but not definitely not an oi. And so it's like, oh, feel, oh, oh. Well, of course, you go a little bit further east, and it's oh. And then there's also the and toilet. Did you get the arm? The arm. arm. That's the iron. Ooh. The arm. And then we have the fact that my daughter was saying, and she may still say, I run. She didn't. She was saying that before she knew how it was spelled. Um. We adding an H there? Yes. Even though we will we can allow um long vowels. I believe that was the case. All right. Let me get this entered and then I will double check. And that was to draw, to paint, to sketch. Uh -huh. My sincere condolences to you, Silver Tail, for having had to grow up in Texas. Yeah, the H shows up everywhere on the class nine, as far as I can see, unless it ends in a consonant. Right. Far enough. I don't really have. We want a distinction between to paint and to draw? Well, to draw to sketch are both in there. So if you want to change one of them, paint should be. Well, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's it's your word. As long as the patrons vote. Well, okay. Well, like, <clears throat> what do you think? I think I'm trying to make sure that I gave you good advice. Yes, it says H. There. Okay, so yes. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the genitive. The, yes, I think so. Let me double check that, though. Yeah, 
Yes, the H is, is there when it needs to be there. Right, but I don't think we ever discussed it. But Well, then we should look at all of the um, entries because I think we have yeah. entered some. Maybe we haven't. Maybe we've only entered two. Um, All right, so it's there. Let's see, because, like, check it out. Um, for cats and dogs, they allow the lengthened vowel. For, in fact, for classes one through three, they allow the lengthened vowel to be in there. Here, it's a different vowel, so it's like, you've got to break that up. But wait, go up. Roll call. Let's see. That is... I don't think we allow long nasal vowels, do we? Oh my god, we do. Oh. oh. Oh, this has gotten a little spicy, hasn't it? How, okay, how does dad dog work? Dog dad, excuse me. I guess I'm asking, but what, what do you mean by that? What's the proto form for this word? Um, Rohan. Rohan. All right, so the first half Rohan. is the first half Rohan. is the first half. Sorry. Is R O M? Yeah. The second half is the uvular R A H. Aha. So that's why um, that's why the H is there. So the H isn't there because um, the H isn't there because it um, it's separating two vowels. It's there because it's a part of the suffix for class three. <sighs> Same thing there. Um, that makes it difficult because, like, I get it's in blue because it's different from its nominative form, but it makes it look like it's part of the genitive suffix being in blue. It does. Um, Which means it's not great examples. No. <clears throat> um, what are classes that actually end in vowels? Are noun classes that end in vowels? Are there any? No, I think we purposely made them all CVC. So no, not a single one. So the H is always going to drop out. The only reason the H is there in parentheses is for borrowed words. Like CP. For borrowed words. Okay, now let's go back to the word that in question we were talking about. Yes, see? Is that right? Yes. Nancy. Nancy. And so. Oh, oh! What would that Wait, it's class nine. Oh, I am so sorry. I did all these wrong. What am I, do what am I doing? Goodness gracious. That's what those should be. David forms right then? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Because they are not long enough. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big tent for there. Um, let me, uh, and that should be like that. And then Oops. Well, that would be 
just do a hyphen there because it's that form would be mace, yeah? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ihinya. Here we're gonna have to type it. Yeah. Do you would it make more sense to have the dot between the yesi and the he? Because then you could just do hyphen himi, hyphen henges, hyphen himye. No. No, because you want to actually treat it as the noun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see. Let's see. Okay. So now Woo! You have to fix the. And we haven't even talked about the meaning yet. Um, Certainly glad that Biblerinian didn't see any of this. Or run us out of town on a rail. Oh God, it's back. Um, okay. So we need to fix the David entry. Then we can go back to the meaning of, of ESC. Then we can move on. Maybe. I was going to check and now I've forgotten. Set. <laughs> okay, now I'm catching up with chat. This is great. Okay, so it's arm for miles too. Oops. Oh, look, look, everybody, our our front rounded mid vowel. Uh, it, it showed up. Nice. Here's. Okay, Jonathan is saying it could be like make visual art gen generic for. Yeah. Um, Why would that be a basic term though? That would make sense. Oh, Magpie, what city in the Midwest? Very important question. All right. Okay, that's pretty good. <clears throat> oh, hold on just a second. Somebody added to it. I was catching up, catching up. Oh, so many good comments. Sorry, I missed it all. We were staring at a, at a thing, at a problem. Okay. Oh, Jonathan doesn't have the, the ah uh, ah uh, uh, merger, the quat hot. I definitely have that merger. Okay. I know, right, Matthias? Like, come on, you two. So do you have the caught kite merger? No. Yes, okay, we went to the park and move a cop. I do not have that. <laughs> Right. Okay, okay. Well, sure, Jonathan, but I have to overemphasize it to get it to come out because otherwise it doesn't come out. So I got to do like coffee. I got to like, oh, I got to like really do it. Otherwise, it doesn't work for me because in my accent, they're all merged. I caught a kite in the park. Danny Yeah. Hey, that's why they spelled it code. C O A T. <laughs> what? All right. <laughs> what do you want to do with this verb? Yeah, like, all right, so no, it's not going to just be make visual art. Well, I'd rather have it be draw or sketch because I do that a heck of a lot more than I paint. 
All right. You know that. All right. All right. So I'm going to take paint out of the other side, I suppose. Ooh. Mm. Oh my goodness gracious. Flipping, flapping. Okay, that's fine. Can we also put the user in a timeout? We should be able to. And report. The problem is, like you had said, they may be coming from multiple accounts. Yeah. For 300 seconds. <laughs> 300 <laughs> seconds they're in timeout. Oh, jail for chatbot. Jail for 1,000 seconds. <laughs> Man. All right. Um, okay. So we have this. Okay. It's 3 p.m. Oh my gosh. We entered verbs. Did something. Do you, do you want the celebration? <laughs> do you want the celebration? I see it in your face. Celebrate with Copito. Da, 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 da. <laughs> How do you get things like that? Like, is YouTube a thing that you can add things to? Cheers. You cheers me upside down. Oh, no. Bad luck. Oh. For 300 seconds. <laughs> oh, there's a store. We can get there's stuff. a store? We're so old. We're like, what? YouTube sure? has a store? <laughs> go, be go. We're talking on screens. <laughs> Did you know they have talking on screens now, Jesse May? Start right around here. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Relative clauses are in such case. Everything. That's right. Um, relative clauses appear directly before the nouns they modify. There are no relative pronouns or other um, overt markers that signify the presence of a relative clause. I fix something for you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. You're welcome. The hyphen shows it's an intentional. So that's good. Mm -hmm. um, rather, a full and complete clause occurs directly prior to a noun and serves as its modifier with a gap in place for the target of relativization. Um, mm. The embedded we have an extra A back here. Let me get that for you. The embedded verb will agree 
with the target of relative sizeization, assuming that it is a part of the bird's main argument structure. And it's argument, not agreement. Oh. But in the minions, it would be a groomer. Yeah. Oof, yeah. By the way, I, I want to write, I want to type this out on the big screen just because I really think it's super cool. And this is what Magpie did. I love it. Feels like it could be a logo. Totally. Like this is what Costco's logo would look like if it were a store in South Coast Plaza. Except the, the C shapes need to actually kind of come together a little bit more and, and have a little swoopy down into each other, like swoop this way and then a swoop that way to create like a central down the middle without actually connecting. I'm going to file that under M for maybe. You have no vision. <laughs> Oh, Jesse's gonna do it. She's gonna do it. She's gonna draw it up. Make it happen. Okay. You're gonna be surprised how light that is. That's good. Alright. Okay. Load. We will graciously show you some examples of good old fashioned relative clauses. I gotta work on my swoopies. It did not work. I drew them too close together at the beginning. Okay. See, look at that. Which one? This one. That one I messed up. Huh. I'm tweaking. Can you do it bigger so that when you put it on screen, people will be able to see it? I'll do it on the pin page. So it's okay. Although, do you like the other one better? But they were going in different directions. I don't know. Um, by the way, were there any birthdays this week? I think so. I grab them. What month is it? September. Yeah, nothing until late October. Yeah, well, I will say that it is my stepfather's birthday today. Uh, On Steve, this very day. That's right. It is It is Steve's birthday, 29th of September. And he is some age. I don't know if I'm 41. He's probably like 60 or 60. Anyway, congratulations. We will be celebrating it festively. Maybe I need a, a fatter marker for the bigger size. Jesse's like C and inverted C have turned into like an entire philosophy. I think this is actually going to be like we found a religion based on this symbol. Okay, now I gotta go here until until I see a sense cream. There we go. Yeah, it's in screen. Eighteen. Okay. Now that makes a lot more sense than one. Yeah, than the one. I was like, how is he being homeschooled if he's so on? The month of one. I'm here, Baron. And Ragdoll, I have your son's birthday on the calendar, so. Mm -hmm. There will be a shout out. All right. Um. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. Okay, let's try this. Whoa. Okay. 
chase here. Oh, is that like a weeper loading? Tea, like. I think we say some. Oh, Abby says there's two Libras. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I see where it comes from. doing a weird posture this way. Okay. Where are you going? What's happening? Right here. Okay. Pot smoke. Cat will chase a mouse is napping? Yes. And what do we want to underline? Like we'll go with the mouse. Who chased a mouse? Because it's gonna normally just be in one verb, yeah. Well, sorry, plus the mouse, yeah, that's gonna be important. All of them are like that, David. I'll fix them. Except for the possessive. The possessive is behaving. But speaking of Discord, um, there has been some great discussion slash examples of words for sun and moon in patron mm -hmm. conlinks, and it's been so much fun to read because um, a lot of people are like posting a lot of information about their words, sun and moon, and why they are what they are, um, and so it's been a lot of fun because... Um, I think in the other channels we get bits and pieces of your languages just like from questions you ask or from things you post to get feedback. Um, but like actually hearing more about some of the decision making process and everything, it's like super exciting. Mm -hmm. Good news for you. Or All right. Ownership. Okay, but those are the same. And yeah, it's a patron discord. I'm getting deep into astrology in the chat right now. That's my opinion. I'm a Gemini. If somebody actually, you know, said, on your life, what is Jesse's sign? Would have been dead. Well, no, you know. It's not you can live. I'm going to forget it. You can ask me again this time next week. I will have forgotten. I'm a little upset that you don't want to... I know your sign. How do you? Because it's like said, one of two. And I looked it up. And what did it say? What? Yeah. And it, everybody tells me I'm Aquarius. That's if you go by the new way. I go by the old way. I don't even know what that means. Here we go. Finally. Oh, it goes along casting light. That is incredibly beautiful. I 
it comes from a it comes from a poem where the poet came up with that because previously the word for sun in Nahuatl was just sun. You call my leg. Yes. Mm. Getting better at and things figuring figure out. that out. Yeah, you do. Um, I want to do also a transitive one, just so where the target of relativization is the, um, <clears throat> let's just say the object of the transitive verb. So I'm going to call this subject one, just so that we can really see how it works. Oh, where it's like, um, I saw the cat who chased the mouse. That's a horrible example, but something like that where it's the direct okay. object of the main clause, but is the subject yeah. of the relative clause. Uh, yes, so let's get, let's see, so, Ooh, bye my all state grammar, the dog, mm, a cat, who chased him, hugged, we have hug, right? We do have hug, but also draw, um, Is, um, I think hug is our best choice. What is that? Um, well, Y and then nasal I Z. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right. <laughs> and the dog is up here. That? Yeah. And T lick. Yeah. R and then something, and then M, and then ek. Yang, ra. And then Yang, ramak. I think it's, um, I think. Uh, it's. I think it's that. Yang, ramak. Uh, Yang, ramak. I'm not 100% sure. I also don't know what the word for dog is. What's the word for dog? Uh, is it, uh, I think we duplicated that one. No, we left it as just uh, with an H. Uh, uh. Uh. Okay. Uh. But I, um, I, I was waiting for it to be verified that this was correct. I was hoping somebody was just going to check it for me. I mean, I think so. But like, I'm bouncing around the deck from it, trying to make sure your other parts are there. But bouncing One moment, yeah. and I will find out. Yeah. <laughs> Very sorry. We just have examples here. We don't have the little stuff at Sea Boys, do we? Yeah. This is before consonant, so yes. And then the next one is going to be before. Um, where does our cue lip come from? Um, I think we're right. I think I, think I got it. Is ek. And it's going to be nasal because the nasalization has the. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, indirect object. We gotta use. Um, Did we need to change? No, you changed it. 
My brain was not seeing the metathesis of the letters. All right. And we, we don't need a direct object too because we've already showed that it's just it shows up before yeah, the just, noun. So just wanted to show yeah, this yeah, that yeah, yeah okay. that it's long form. Woo. You have All to right. you have to think though that if the um, if the relative clause is long enough, um, the whole thing would be pushed to the left and the subject would be dislocated to the right. Otherwise, people would forget. The overall sentence structure. And so what you're saying is it would sort of be a topicalized thing where the O and S can get inverted um, solely because of weight. Yeah. Let's do a couple of these. Um Titi Tsumu Tsumu Katsmo and Titi Tsu Tsumu Mumu Katsmo. I like that. Um all right, let's do an agent, uh, I'm sorry, recipient uh, transitive. So the cat uh, who, who gave the mouse a shovel is napping. So give is ya, right? Um, y a g h. Yes, ya. Yeah. And then shovel is um, dj. And that's going to be first. Is uh, that one is from OS to? Um, it's probably bad, right? Okay. But 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 it's T like. Right, that is what. Here, A R transitive T like from oh. OS to give. Oh. All right. Okay. Uh, Momo is napping. Cat who gave the mouse a shovel is napping. Wait. Yeah, that's why he needs to get the mouse a cookie. Oh, but also, gosh damn it, it's it's the wrong one. It's the wrong one. Which one is the wrong one? It it's it should be whom the mouse gave a shovel. Because the cat needs to be the direct object, not the, or the indirect object, not the subject. Yeah, so this is actually going to be... Tutu, tutu. and then DJ, and then Momo. And then... Or not Momo, be because M, that's... And this would be TS. Yeah, Tutu. The cat, whom? Wolf to mouse Momo. Whom the mouse gave, excuse me. It's snapping. Perfect. <coughs> All right, we don't have any ad positions yet. Oh. Um, so let's do. Um... We can do possessive, though, can't we? No. Yes. Yes, we can do possessive. We're going to push that one to later. Uh, what I want to do right now is um, do uh, an, uh, another case. Um, Would you like ablative, palliative, or illative? I don't know, but I need a name for this. Um, um, local. Or, or, yeah, local, not core. Local case. I said the wrong word. Kind of embarrassing. Right. Local case. Okay. Sounded like you said local. <laughs> Thank you, Ragdoll. Okay. Okay. The cat. Um, 
I think we can say this, it's just uh, a little convoluted. Is there something simpler? Like, let's make a word for like run or walk or run something. Run still walked away from, so whom the mouse walked away from. Yeah. From whom the mouse walked. fled. Okay. Fled, let's do flee. All right, new root. All right. Okay. This is how we're gonna do it, Jesse. Consonant. I don't remember what consonants we have. That's not how this works. Consonant. Just, just. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Consonant. Q. O. P. P. There we go. Wait. Oh no, we don't have a P. P. O. All right, hope is now our root for flea. Do we have too many keywords that are verbs already? Do we have any? Car and quotes. I don't know, but you were all fired up about that cue, so. We're stuck with it now. That's what grabbed my attention because it was right in the table. You didn't give me time, you said. I didn't want to give you time. I wanted to give you an ultimatum. Uh, Cabon is how that is going to be coming out. When I was in elementary school, there was this awful teacher named Mr. Moltane. He was one of those teachers where it was like, how is this guy not fired? But uh, he had a wife, or he had a wife, and they had a pet turkey. Oh, Ben. And they uh, came up with a song for the pet turkey. The pet turkey's name is Boomerang. And I haven't forgotten the song to this day. Boom, boom, boomerang. My name is Boomerang. I might run away, but I'll be back again. I can strut around. <coughs> I can even fly. Watch me turn my back, and I'll come right back again. Do, do, do. It's terrible. <coughs> I don't know. I can't. Learned it one day in one period of music, and I haven't forgotten it ever since. You know what I'll never forget? Mm -hmm. The song that Meridian's teacher taught her. Oh, yeah. And it keeps coming back. This, this, this word makes me think of the Van Halen song, Cabo Wabo. Okay, so why does the velar nasal stop nasal spreading? Because it started off as a K. It makes more sense. It's one of those little paradox keys. Okay, to uh, uh, to to flee. Thank you. To flee. On our way. That's a valid song. Yeah, 
song. It's big, though. Oh, yeah. Someone just came in our house. Yes. This was expected, and I didn't tell you this, but remember how Meridian's soccer stuff got left here because we didn't go to soccer on Tuesday because they canceled practice. And then my mother was taking her to practice. I thought we didn't have her stuff, which is why it was good that practice was canceled. Because we didn't have anything but socks. It's not in the thing? As far as I know, no. Which is why we were like, whew, practice is canceled. We don't have her soccer stuff. Because her soccer stuff was left in the car. And then what happened to it? Well, anyway, it's, it's Aaron. Well, that's good. Because now we get to try to decide where the soccer stuff is. Yeah, maybe she might. Well, we're, we're going to find out. Hey. Hey. So, was the soccer stuff in there? Yeah. Except for the water bottle. Which she never was separate. Has. No, she gave it to me. And I forgot because it wasn't with the soccer stuff. Oh. <laughs> but there was soccer stuff here. Yeah, the soccer bag was here with the shin guards and the plates and the soccer wasn't ball. Here. You told me it wasn't here. No, you I believed told, you. You told me on Tuesday it wasn't here, which is why we texted you, and then we're like, oh, practice is canceled. And you were like, oh, thank goodness I didn't give you the soccer stuff anyway. Well, somebody no, told me the soccer I stuff wasn't here. I didn't give you the pink socks. All the rest of the soccer stuff I had already given to you. Okay. Well, we already have pink socks here. Yeah. That's where the other pair of pink socks is? Yeah, it's left here, so that way we would always have a pair on Tuesdays. I've been, like, trying to find them so I didn't have to keep washing socks all the time. Do you want them right yeah. now? Yeah. Okay, well, where are they? <laughs> hi, <laughs> all. It's me. Hi. Who met me? It's a lie. Oh, no, no, no it's not a lie. Hi, Jay. Oh, my goodness. They don't lie. Costco. I love it. Hey, wow. Jesse, Jake just got you beat for Costco. It looks outstanding. That should be the new logo. Check this out. The blue socks, but we need these for game day. Can I keep those for game day? I can't see it. These are my wrong glasses to be trying to see from a distance. Oh, that's nice. But that's Great. essentially what mine is, just not connected. It's just with Unicode. Anyway. So everybody yeah. can type that like an article on stuff. Yeah, but mine is like hand drawn design. Mm -hmm. Do you, yeah, but sometimes things that are hand drawn are worse. Do you want to pick what other person <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Genitive? Oblative. Oblative, it's the yo one. Okay. <clears throat> the Burmese, they got themselves a good script, let me tell you. They're doing it right. Okay. From whom the mouse fled. Let's see, let's see. This is where we're going to need. Um, okay. Hmm. Uh, once local cases get involved, um, a resumptive pronoun is required. This pronoun will match the target of relativization and either number and person or in class. There we go. It's all good. I'm just gonna stand back here, make buddy here. It's good can, you, can you help me with this? We need to do fled. We need to do it in this one. It, 
We just created it. It's Cobb. Um, okay. Um, just a second. Just a second. Let me get back to the chart. I'm not actually going to hang out. So bye, everybody. Aww. You don't want to just stand here. And watch I, I this actually happen. would love to stand here and be the peanut gallery. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I could just take over reading out all the really, you know, insulting comments from the chat. Yeah. But I do sadly have to deliver these so that Noelle will take her to soccer. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. Because soccer practice is still happening. Yes. Yeah. Pretty hot out there, isn't it? It is very warm. Very warm. <laughs> and it started off so cool and cloudy. But yeah. So, anyway, right, you guys right. have a good rest of stream. Thank Farewell, you. everybody on there. Yeah. You, you as well. Fun to, fun to see your writing. That is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye, all. Bye. Okay, so it's going to be. This is that file. So, Obi? Obi. Because it's. Because it's transitive. I mean, because it's in transit. Because it's yeah. in transit. Huh? What? Um, I, I don't know how that's going to work. Are they going to take her? I think they're going to the soccer practice with her and stay. Okay, well, do, do we want to get them and then drop them off and then go shopping? Go shopping? Just text me when you're done with stream on, yeah. Because the TS there is for the mouse agreement. Yes. And the B turns to a P, and then yeah, will be will be the intransitive T lift. Or does it? Let's let's see. No, it doesn't. Oh. Okay. So let's see. I mean, not that it really matters. Um, you pronounce it however you pronounce it, but that's all. Okay. Okay. So Okay, yes. My goodness, that leaves there almost. Oh my gosh. Almost See, that's why I told it. you it was a bad choice, Look, but whatever. Your heart was set on it. So. No, it wasn't set on it. You you told me, and so I just threw something out, but then it needed to... Um, no. Um, I needed to give you an option. All right. Um, so, okay, incidentally, if you were wondering what an internally headed relative clause would look like, um, I'm just going to, don't worry, I'm going to go back, but, I'm worried. Oh, I just hit alt. Oh, oh my, I, what, oh, oh, oh. Jeez. Gosh, you are breaking everything, David. Sorry, I just wanted to show everybody this is what an internally headed relative clause would look like. So this would be, uh, you know, the cat um, from the mouse fled its napping. But, but the, uh, the mouse... But here's the thing. This is the agreement. But I, no, I can't take it back. <laughs> You've broken something, please take it back. So it's like we could have done internally headed relative no. clauses with our agreement, but uh, no. All right. Would have made things a little special. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank you, Bib. Something just broke, and now we need to move on. I mean, um, we need to discuss what we, we're. We got them in English. It's just a little folksy. You know, uh, like, um, uh, you know, like, I hate that horse run on Saturday. that anytime someone wants to come up with something stupid, like a garden pass sentence, they're like, the horse ran past the barn fell. And they're like, let's do the horse and it's being run. Because that's the only way to get these stupid things. No, 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 no. Oh, shoot. That, I, I, it should, okay. I, uh, I hate that player played on Saturday. No, I can't do that. 
Sure you can. I hate the player that played on Saturday. I can't do that. Oh. If if oh. a relative pronoun is the subject and you delete it for me, I'm like, what? Hmm. Especially if it's, yeah, if it's the agent, I can't. I'm not trying to argue for them, but I'm just saying it would sure short things up. Well, let's, let's uh, talk about, um, so 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what we should do? Um, here, I'm going to get rid of this for the time being. We should do this one. Uh, just, just real quick. It'll be similar to this one. I love how you, like, earlier when I said we could do it, you're like, no, we're going to save that one. Now you're like, it's just right. real quick. No, I meant we're going to save it to last because in the order of things of how likely they are, it's one of the last ones. Uh, the very last one is um, comparatives. Yeah. Really, I saw I saw the mouse when I'm taller than. That's like supposed to be the very last thing you could relativize. Okay. The cat who's mouse. And then, how do we do possessives? E. No, no, no. Like, what order? Does the possessor come first? Possessors precede possessees. All right. So then we need um, this pronoun. And we need it in the genitive. Me. Me to two cut so mumu cuts mo. Cat whose mouse fled is napping. Yes. And for fun, those of us who are in the know could just drop this word. So, one thing. No, 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 no. Sorry. Anyway, go ahead. Like, listen, uh -huh. you sure you don't want to change the verb for to flee just so that way our example sentences are clearer and we're not staring at it going, the hell? Like, it's totally different verb form, so it looks totally different from Katsmo. I mean, it's 100% your word, so if you would like to change it, we can change it. Like, even making it h instead so it can stay in the same place, like hops, hapso. Like, just adding something to make it clear that the base is different. <sighs> well, we, we just do the opposite of it. So, Lock. the opposite of a uvular is a labial, but we don't want a labial. So, let's make it a T. Or, in fact, let's make it a D. All right? D. Opposite of A is obviously E. Can we get that vowel? No, let's make it E. Um, so, let's, let's say that it's going to be E. And then the opposite of this is um, Guh. Guh, but we don't have a g. Let's make it a. How about um, how about like that? Deal. What do you think? Did you tell me to deal with it. Deal. Let's see what it shows up as. Oh wait, but we already have a word that starts with D. Let's make it a T. How about that? Okay. I like T. Yeah. Okay, I like that. All right. Okay, and then that's probably B and then the I mean, I'm just guessing. I believe so, but let me double check. Did, yeah. Okay, so now can you go down to the dictionary entry and fix change couple to to yeah. which is unfortunate. Well, we can change that. Leave the entry there. We'll put in a different K verb. Yeah. Um, so we have 
Yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do before four p.m. So everybody decide what verb this is gonna be. Oh, we're gonna leave cob as a verb. Yeah. Okay. What verb should it be, folks? Maybe to be the same. <laughs> Just like that, we now have more verbs in here. Try again. Oh, hey, Carl. Hey, Carl. Uh, Carl and I got a lot of work to do. And I, didn't, I didn't answer the call this week. I didn't answer the call. The call. to do some tomorrow. Let me go back to our group list and make sure I don't accidentally suggest things there. Hmm. That. To I get mean, spooked? Yeah, like yeah, okay. now with our with our verbs um, being the way they are. Um, <laughs> We're repressing a hairball coming up. It could be used transitively as well. Like so. to spook. Yeah. To spook or to scare. Yeah. And that would be the entry we would want to make, right? Because wouldn't you want it to be to speak to scare? Yeah. Because then you would just put it in passive to <clears throat> to make it to be spooked. Well, we wouldn't need it to be in passive. You just make it in transitive? Yeah. Oh, boy. Now we've already come up. Darn it. Now we've hit one of those paradoxes. Well, I guess it's the difference between intilicity, isn't it? Yeah, it's a difference in intilicity. You like the jet? Um, okay, to spook, to scare, to frighten. Capture the other two? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, good. Done. Good. Okay. Woo! All right. 12 minutes. Let's, let's move forward and think about uh, the poll. poll. Yeah, so we're pretty good. I mean, we just have, really, it's just, uh, we just have to fill it in here. Yeah. Cross our I's and dot our T's to fill in how particles work. Um, and we have those for lock of adverbs. Um, uh, coordination is a thing. Um, relative clauses are written out. Um, questions. I do get some questions. You know, have um, uh, just
tools to have intonation um, or have a question formation strategy? Very good. Okay, we'll do yes-no questions. Um, <clears throat> and we've got a good long while, so let's go ahead and drum up some uh, ideas. So, option one, always, always the, a solid option is change intonation. Option two. Because uh, the verb fully agrees, shifting word order. That would lock in word order for the rest of the time, though, wouldn't it? But option two, if you want to throw it Wait. out there as a, a question marking particle, of course, that could be an option. Yeah. Um, um, but, okay, hold on a sec. Uh, so our verbs work like this. We have uh, root, and then we have pronouns, and then we have auxiliary, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest something. Absolutely vile. It's gonna win. Well, it's your it's your idea, or it's based on your idea. So, um, let's see. Okay, mumu, si, si, su, um, oops. Uh, give me the tense. Is it a K? I'm double checking. Okay. That bare form would come in. theory behind this is that I, I shouldn't have taken away the schema. Um, we have uh, root uh, pronouns, auxiliary. And the, I, and, the, and the theory behind doing that was, you know, chased it did effectively. I'm going to chase it. Yes, thank you. And so the theory behind this is that you just move that out front. He yeah, did. Uh, cat mouse chase. Cat mouse chase. So this was inspired by your suggestion, which was talking about changing the word order. Actually, I'm fine with it as an option. Yeah. I don't think it's as vile as you seem to think. Mm -hmm. uh, fronted. Auxiliary. I would say pronoun. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Fronted auxiliary carries the agreement. Yeah, actually, maybe... Um, so it's like fronted pronoun auxiliary. Yeah, I guess that's... No, it's agreement. Okay. <clears throat> and this would be an interesting way to have the bare form of the verb show up. Yeah. That's totally not imperative. It's not... I mean, it's only going to be, as far as we know... If, Potentially in yes/no questions, um, but like, I guess that's kind of cool. 
Yeah. Now, option four would be question form of verb. And so, I want to tease out how to do that. Um, and Silvertail, you know, having different question intonation is always a possibility with all of these other strategies. But if we go with option one, then intonation would be the only way that you would distinguish a question from a sentence in the language. So yeah. like, it wouldn't be paired. But yeah, I mean, of course, like there's always the option that, you know, you decide to do a question particle, but it takes a special intonation pattern. Like, or, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, just consider English. Um, so it's like, I ate at a restaurant yesterday. Did I eat at a restaurant yesterday? It's not, did I eat at a restaurant yesterday? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, the intonation changes too. There's just other stuff, you know? Yeah. Okay, so then, um, question form of verb. I feel like it would have to be a second auxiliary because I uh -huh. don't want to get into yeah, no. a question T lick versus question A T lick for yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. So I feel like it would be another auxiliary that gets, essentially auxiliary one is um, telicity and transitivity. Auxiliary two would be um, interrogative auxiliary, but it gets attached. I thought we did. Certainly not in the mouse language, but have to look. Um, while David is teasing out where such an auxiliary could come from, come on pages, go faster. Oh no, we had a, a particle in the mm -hmm. So may, maybe not. Um, I'm looking up to talk that now. We have a, another question for By we, I'm sure that means the, the viewers and patrons. Mm, this one is not so much a particle. What the issue was the negative polar or the opposite polarity of the main verb following the sentence. So, like, tukizu is the mouse is sliding, but chukizuneji is the question. Mm. It's like, the mouse slid or not? Yeah. So, I, I tend um, to default to yes, no for uh, <laughs> intonation for yes, no questions as well. <laughs> Honestly, this poll may have broken Jesse. He broke her heart. It was, yeah. But, um, I mean, if we want, if we want to like take out what we've been doing, we could remove the particle as an option, um, and just have it be change intonation. That's it. Um, have some sort of fronted agreement auxiliary, um, or a, an auxiliary that gets added onto the verb. I'm willing to do that. Itself. Uh, not because it's not a great option, but just because we want to do something a little different, sure. Um, but I think this could work well in that it's placement 
um, would be just like that. And so, oh, nice. All right. I like that. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> all right. Well, we did some good work today, I think. I think so, too. After a disappointing fall. Yeah. Uh, all good. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll get over it. We'll make it good. Um, all right. You know, it is interesting, Matthias, yeah, the, um, sometimes the strategies that are easiest and require the least amount of documentation we avoid because we feel like it's not enough, um, but it totally is. Yeah. Um, and uh, I will also mention, not announce, I will mention that we've narrowed it down to, I think, six cities for COVID-con. For the next round of voting. Yeah, for the next round of voting. So um, we look forward to that. I want to do more of a write-up for this. but We're trying to do some research into overall pricing yeah. um, so people can understand. For instance, like what is an average hotel room going to run if you don't have some place to stay? Yeah. Um, oh, there city. we go. Six city tour. That that's is right. exactly. Yeah, that's actually what we should do. You Just know what? Hit, hit a couple people at each stop. Have you heard of these, uh, these uh, luxury cruise liners where you just move in? For like periods of six months to two years. Why don't years. we just do that? That's just everybody jump on board. We're going to cruise uh, Scandinavia. Cruise. It's going to go all around. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, during the right time of the year, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we'll we'll get that announced and up when we're ready. We are not ready yet, no. but just so you know, we are working on it. We promise you that has not escaped our notice. Yeah. All right. Well, let's say goodbye for the week. Happy end of September. And we look forward to seeing you all next Thursday. Right on. Cookie cruise. Cookie cruise. Stay grammar. <laughs> Bye, everybody.